everybody. We're back on our blackjack game tutorial, and we've already created an enumerated type for our suit. Okay, I'm going to keep that open for now. And uh, what we're going to do is um, I'd like to create an enumerated type for our rank. And we're going to follow the same format, only it's going to be a little different because our rank is going to have rank values that are going to be number values. We're going to need that to compute our game. We're going to need to do it to compare like the values of cards. And so instead of giving it strings here, we're actually going to give it integer values. So we're going to do what we did before. We have our card game project. I'm going to right click on it, choose new, and I'm going to make another enum. And this one is called rank. Notice I made it singular. I've seen a lot of enumerated types do it this way. And so it's common. Now I'm going to move this over here and we're going to focus on the left. I'm going to leave suit open as a reference and you can use that as a reference too. I'm going to go ahead and hide this. So here we go. Let's going to go ahead and make our ranks. Now we're going to use some of the standard terminology. Get your caps lock open. You're going to write out ace. Now, an ace can be worth a 1 or an 11. But for our rank, we're just going to give it 1. And then in the course of the game, because it depends on the way the game is being played as to whether it counts as a 1 or 11, right? Um, if, if it's a 1 and it doesn't break, goes over. if it doesn't go over 21, then we use it as a 1. If we can make it 11 and not go over, we make it 11. But that behavior, we're going to keep out of rank here. We're just going to keep it to one value, which is 1. And then, deuce is a common way of talking about 2. We give it the value 2. And then we're going to proceed to go through here. 3 is worth 3. And then I'm going to do about 3 per line before I hit enter. And that's just to save space. Okay, so at this point, we've enumerated every rank from ace to king. They are, they are all that we have. They are constants, but they all have a, a, an integer value, not a string value. So we're going to create a field for it, and we're going to call it, instead of rank, uh, uh, rank text, it's not really text, it's a value. So we make it private. Oops, i got to take caps, caps lock off private final int and we'll call it rank value okay it's an integer now we have to create our constructor remember it's private it has to match the name of the class which is rank with a capital R and in this case we're going to give it an int which is rank value and it's this dot rank value. Now, let me back up a step, guys. Take a look at this. <laughs> Literally, take a look at this on line 12. Watch what happens when I hit the dot. It already offers up rank value because it knows that this refers to the class of rank, refers to each individual item, and it also recognizes this as its field. So this dot rank value is referring to each one, like ace has a rank value of one, and deuce has a rank value of two, etc. Okay, so the outside one here is whatever we pass in, and we're actually passing it in through here, like so. Okay, we already did it before with our other one. That's our constructor. Let's go ahead and label it as constructor. Let's also make this our private field. Of course, there's only one private field, but you know, hey. Now, our public method, public. It's going to return an int, so we write int. And then we're going to, in this case, we're going to call it print rank. We could call it get rank. Maybe that's a better way to do it. We'll call it get rank. Now, we don't need to receive anything to get the rank. We do have to return it. And it's just rank value. 
This should work. And by the way, we want to return it as an int. And the reason why we want to return it as an int is that's going to allow us to compare the rank of one card to the rank of another. It's going to allow us to add up our cards. So if we have a king and a jack, those are each worth 10. If we have an ace, we can make it worth a 1. That's 11. That's blackjack. So, that, so we need to know, for example, have we met blackjack? Have we gone over? You know, what happened? And so by returning the value, we can make comparisons. And that's one of the other benefits of an enumerator. Because in an enumerated value, we can make comparisons using if, else, else, if statements. Okay? So there's our enumerator. Now, if you're following along on the video, now's a good time to pause to make sure you have everything on here. I'm going to zoom down just a little bit. Um, I think what I will do is just to help it out, I'm just going to put a little space here. And I'm just going to make sure they all sort of fit on fewer lines. So there's the full code for our rank enumerator. So go ahead and pause it now. Make sure you got your code right on both of these. OK, hopefully you've had a chance to write all that down. I'm going to go ahead and save everything. And I want to go back to my card. Now I'm going to start by looking at our card. We're going to create our suits. And actually, we're going to create our uh, private fields. So in our private fields, we're going to give every card a suit. Notice, to create it, capital S suit represents the enum, which is suit. And I'm going to move rank over here, too. And we're going to do the same thing for our rank. We're going to make them private. OK, so those are our private fields. We're going to have one more. And this is a Boolean type. Is face up. OK. So is face up will determine whether the card is face up or not. OK. Then we're going to have our constructor. And we're going to make it public. Public card. Now. When we construct our card, we're not going to want to ever make a card that doesn't have a rank or a suit. So there's really only one constructor that we need, and that's the constructor that gives it the rank and the suit when it creates the card in the first place. So we have to give our suit and our rank here. We're going uh, to do rank first, by the way. So like ace of spades, for example. Okay, now in our constructor, it's just this dot uh, rank equals rank, and this dot suit equals suit. Okay, in our constructor, it's gonna we're gonna tell it what the rank and suit is when we construct it. Now we're gonna want to have some other construct. We're gonna have uh, some other methods. I'm gonna put a public methods. Hey, hold on. So we're going to allow, in our public method, we're going to allow us to get the rank in the suit. So we need two public methods here. So suit is going to be in the form of a string, and it's get suit. We make it public. We indicate we're returning a string, and do we just return suit dot uh, print suit? There you have it. See that? So we're going to print the suit of this card suit. Okay, print suit is going to call up the, the suit right here, right? Um, there it is, print suit. And we're going to do the same thing now for our rank. Now this is an int, and it's get rank. And we're going to do the same thing like we did with rank. Let's take a look over there. And on here, we're going to return 
rank dot and it's get rank. Print suit get rank. Okay. Finally, we're going to have a method overload or a method override, excuse me, and it's this two string method. Public string two string. And now remember when we do a two string method, we have to create a string. We'll call it str. Actually, we're going to start by setting it to an empty string. Now, watch what we do. str plus equals rank dot uh, get rank of. Now I'm going to put it on the next line. Suit dot print suit. And then we're going to return the string. So at this point, now there's our constructor with all of our public methods that are exposed. That so, and then we're going to deal with the face up later. But for now, let's focus on this. Again, you might want to pause the code here and make sure you got all the code that I have. All right, guys, I think based on the time of the video, we're running low on time. So I'm going to add just one last thing. And I forgot to do this in our constructor. We're going to set is face up equal to false. So we're going to start by making our card face down, which is how it would be in the deck. You wouldn't see what the value is. Um, the interesting thing is, in this case, we should only uh, be able to represent our string if is face up is set to true. So actually, maybe we'll start by setting it to true to begin with. Later on, we'll deal with this when we do our game. So basically, we're not going to allow us to show the actual rank and suit of our card if it's face down. Oh, heck, let's just do it anyway. All right. If is face up, we are then going to set our rank. Else you know what? I don't need to do an else because here's the deal. Our string is already empty, and so only if it's face up do we show it. Otherwise, we don't show Well, maybe I should say something like it's face down. We'll go ahead and do that. So I'll put a little face down, nothing to see here for our string. So now we're only going to show the string if it's face up. So we've already added a little bit of functionality. Now, I've ran out of time to really code and test this out, so I'm going to end the video now. In the next video, we're going to make a game class, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to create an entire deck of cards using a for loop using those enumerated types. But before we do that, we're just going to test out the enumerated types to make sure they work. So stay tuned for that.